Good afternoon, folks. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School. What I thought we'd do today is finish up our trough or our small dough bowl that we were working on in the last video. Stay with me and we'll get started. All right, so now what we're looking at is we're removing everything from this thing that's not bowl, basically. And to do that, we've got to kind of figure out a couple things. First of all, we need to figure out pretty much where the bottom of our bowl is. And I'm just going to mark across here on both sides. And that's about where my deepest point of my bowl is. And that's going to tell me coming around here where the base is going to be. And I can just pretty much eyeball that for the most part. All those lines are going to go away eventually anyway as we're carving. So this is just giving us some generalities for ideas to begin with. So we know I want our, we want our base about right there. And if we want our base to be fairly oval in shape, then we can take a compass and we can figure that out pretty easy and just mark that off by squeezing things together and getting things where we need to have them here. And again, a lot of this process can be eyeballed. It doesn't have to be perfectly measured. You do, however, have to have your glasses on if you wear them to be able to see what you're doing. Now, I'm just kind of trying to keep this bottom between this part and this part because the bottom's pretty even already as far as where I've cut it off at. So if we make an arc here like this and then we come over here and we do the same thing that's going to give us a bottom that's shaped very similar to the inside of our bowl. And these are guidelines again. This is not uh, anything set in stone right now. It's just us going through the design process of what we think is going to look good when we're done. Now, from that, we kind of want to remove something like this so we've got a large amount of waste right there to get rid of because we have to get rid of all of this first and the same thing on the other side so if we draw those fairly even on both sides then we'll know how much we've got to get rid of and we can start with that we can start with the axe or we can go to, straight to the draw knife and get rid of it that way Okay, so this type of draw knife, this is a curved Grantsford Brooks draw knife, and this thing's made for major material reduction and bark removal. So it works really good for getting off big heavy duty chunks of material, but it's not very good for fine delicate work, so we'll change over to another draw knife for that. Now another way to effectively remove this stock, if we don't have a draw knife, is we can use our ads, just turn the bowl over coming from the back side and remove material with the ads like this.
Okay, so I got the inside of this thing pretty much the way I wanted after dealing with the cabin scraper there for a few minutes. And this is probably like watching paint dry, but I'm kind of trying to take you through the whole process because it takes a little while and it takes a little bit of studying on things. I've already decided now that I've got a little bit more to take off on these two edges here with the draw knife to kind of get better balance in that bowl. So I'm going to come down in here and pull some material off here on this opposite side here. Same thing on this side. That's looking a lot better. Yeah, it looks a lot better. This gives us much better symmetry on both ends of this bowl. Now we're going to go in here and we're going to carve our lip around here so we don't have that hard edge. Alright, so what I'm going to do with this uh, bowl is I'm going to lightly sand this chip carved area for sure because it'll really make it pop when I oil it up. All those little indentions will really pop if I just lightly sand them. You can see I went around there and left myself an oval right there on the bottom for a base. And so if I just lightly sand the chip carving areas, this thing will really pop once I stain it. Now, I get a lot of questions about, you know, what do you do to keep that stuff from cracking? What kind of wood are you using? What kind of oil are you using? This is tulip poplar, and I use poplar a lot. You can use about any wood that you want to use and just experiment, but fruit woods are good, hardwoods are good, soft woods, softer woods, I should say, like tulip poplar and things like that are very easy to begin with uh, because they're very easy to carve when they're green. To keep this thing from cracking or anything from cracking, I usually just generally leave them outside in my shed. I don't worry about stacking a bunch of chips in there and putting them in a plastic bag and all that stuff. I actually just have a bin over here, I'll show it to you, that's got my projects in it and I just throw them in there as I'm done. So here's a bin over here and it's got, you know, projects in it from a year ago and it's got projects in it from a couple days ago, all in the same bin. I just put them in there, stack them loose and neat in there and let them dry. Some of this stuff's been in here for quite a while. Some of it's been pretty freshly put in here. So I just keep throwing them in there. But this thing right here, absolutely, if anything was going to crack, this thing should have cracked. It was carved right down into the wood itself, into the hollow. And if anything was going to crack, this definitely would have. And it has not cracked yet. And I made this several, several months ago. Um, so this is the way I do it. And I just stack them all in there. And as they dry, I oil them. And I just throw them back in there because most of this stuff's example stuff anyway. Here's one I made at the gathering that I put my mark on. 
It hasn't been oiled yet, I don't think. It doesn't feel like it. And I'm just letting it dry. And as they dry, I pull them out of there and I oil them up. And I just throw them back in there. And I take them with me when I do, you know, shows and things like that. Or when I'm teaching. Folks, I appreciate you joining me today while we finished up our dough trough or our dough bowl here. And these were very popular throughout medieval Europe as well into the 19th century and all across the Appalachian frontier as well. And this one's made in a little smaller scale, really about the size of something you want to mix bannock mix in or something like that. Not really a bread dough bowl. They were much larger, probably three times this long and twice this wide. But this is a good small scale project to start out with in bulk carbon. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.